Chairman of the Board and Directors, uh, Your Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would like to thank the uh, Chairman for inviting me to speak and to participate in this prestigious conference. I'm glad to be here for the first time in this beautiful city of Mumbai and this beautiful country of India. During my global travel, duty travel, I have had the honor to um, meet with and talk with some of the great minds from India on education, and I'd like to acknowledge their contribution to the practice and the theory of education. I would also like to acknowledge the uh, Indira Gandhi University. Uh, this university came to our help a few years back when we were trying to upgrade our teachers uh, to gain their master's degree, and uh, we've had the privilege of um, about half a dozen of our teachers doing their masters through the Kandy uh, University, and I would like to acknowledge that too. Uh, my purpose this morning is to share with you um, some of my experiences um, that I had as an educational leader and a change agent. And uh, you would excuse me and forgive me if I sound more like a politician than an educator. Um, but I'm reminded this morning of what President John F. Kennedy used to say, or once said, our progress as a nation can be no swifter than our progress in education. The human mind is our fundamental resource. Samoa is a small independent nation of about 186,000 people. We have scarce resources with a small manufacturing export sector. Our national income derives mainly from tourism and remittance. Next year, Samoa will be elevated to developing country status, a testament to the progress made politically, socially, and economically in just over 50 years of self-rule. Much of our progress as a nation happened over the past 25 years. Since the early 1990s, education development has been at the forefront of our national development priorities. The Comprehensive 10-Year Education Plan, 1995 to 2005, provided the policy guidelines and strategies aimed at improving the standard of education in Samoa, which was found to be inefficient and lacking clarity of vision and articulated policy by the World Bank Review in 1992. One of the major goals of the policies was to strengthen post-school education, which includes university education and technical and vocational education and training. And I have been blessed to have been involved in leading the reforms in both school or tertiary sector from 1992 to 2009, whilst also contributing to the development of basic education in general. The problem with the post school education sector is that it was too fragmented and competitive within an environment of scarce resources, resulting in poor quality teaching and learning. The underlying theme of post-school education is synergy. It was vitally important that the sector be coordinated and complementary. And this required a change in mindset from working as individuals and being territorial. This was the beginning of a two-phase sector-wide approach to educational development in Samoa. The first phase included the strengthening through amalgamation of all public post-school education institutions under either the Samoa Polytechnic or the National University of Samoa. My first important task as principal was to recommend to cabinet in 1992 to upgrade the technical institute into a polytechnic and that it should be independent from the Ministry of Education and the Public Service Commission. In 1993, the first polytechnic in Samoa was launched with a new vision and mission. 
I was able as the first CEO to upgrade the salaries of staff and to attract good qualified lecturers and tutors. A much improved communication strategy was developed and nurtured between the polytechnic and the community, particularly with the industries who provided work experience opportunities and full-time employments for graduates.